Time for an oil change? Head to Jiffy Lube. We've got you covered. We've also got you covered when it comes to oil changes, thanks to Pennzoil Synthetic Motor Oil, getting you back on the road in a Jiffy. Jiffy Lube. Leave worry behind. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. When was the last time? You checked your credit scores. Know what they are now, not from a year ago with Credit Karma. They also offer free credit monitoring. Visit creditkarma.com or download the app now. That's Credit Karma, K-A-R-M-A dot com. Plus, ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Small business protection just got easier. With more than 30 coverage options available, Progressive has you covered. More at progressivecommercial.com. 31 minutes past hour number one back here on the Stephen A. Smith Show ESPN Radio. Start off hour number two, all pro wide receiver A.J. Green for the Cincinnati Bengals will be on the show with us. Talk to us about some NFL action. Until then, 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. That's the calls. That's the number to call into the show. Let me get to a couple of items before I finish my thought. A um, couple of things I wanted to do. Number one, I wanted to reiterate. Somebody uh, said that, you know, um, I intimated on 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 first take yesterday that Mormons were Christians or something. First of all, let me apologize ahead of time because I don't recall saying that. But if I did, I sincerely apologize. I'm fully aware that Mormons are Christians, so I just want to pick that because I got listeners in Utah. I want you to know that. So th- th- that might have been a slip up on my part arguing with Matt Kellerman about a completely different point. I want to make sure I apologize if indeed I said something so ignorant. Um, cause I'm fully aware that you're Christians. Number one, number two, getting back to the issue of basketball. Let me say this as it pertains to the New York Knicks, you know, I'm talking culture change here in my perfect world. Mark Jackson would be the head coach for the Oklahoma city thunder. They're a better team with better parts. And I think he could do damage with that team. But I'm saying in the interest of New York, understanding the culture that exists, please understand everybody's saying, well, Stephen A., what difference does it make? Because Dolan and them are going to do what they're going to do. They get in the way. My point is we need somebody here as an extension of the people that would make the business of Madison Square Garden refrain from getting in that coach's way. That's my hope. That's what I'm after here. That's why I keep bringing up the name Mark Jackson for New York. That's why I believe that. On another note, a friend of mine who will remain nameless sat up there with his sensitive self talking about I'm still hating on on Ben Simmons. I am not hating on Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons is a superstar in the making. This brother is special. And when he gets a jump shot, he'll be LeBron part two, but he don't have one yet. Only attempted 12 three-pointers on the year, didn't hit a single one of them. He ain't a jump shooter. And when he's on the court, unless he's attacking the basket and finishing or kicking it out to shooters, Ben Simmons is going to have some problems with Boston. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. JP in Brooklyn, you're live with Stephen A. I knew you'd be calling in, buddy. What's going on? The floor is yours. What's up, team? Thanks for having me. I've been trying to get in contact with you for the longest about this Mark Jackson situation. Go ahead, man. Floor is yours. I am livid. I am livid as a Knicks fan, you know. And it's not like I can get up and walk away. It's like, you know, um, a lot of racist people going around treating black people bad in America. And you know the answer? Why don't you leave? And the Knicks is the same way. They're treating the Knicks fans horribly. And it's the, the answer is, then you know, root for another team. And it's not that easy. You know, Mark Jackson should have already been in the office looking at who we're trying to draft, trying to establish an identity for the team. But these guys wouldn't be cute. They want to be cute, just like the Browns was cute with they pick. They want to be cute with, you know, what what coach is going to. They want us to know. They want us to know they're putting. They want us to know they're putting forth their due diligence, which I can respect. But this is more than just basketball. That's how bad, as a franchise, as a conglomerate, this is how bad the Knicks have been. It can't be just about basketball. It's games they playing with us. You know, this has nothing to do with that. This has to do with, you know, this man 
coming here and bringing his players, just like any other coach who, 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 who you know, started, you know, co- coaching a team and all of a sudden the team started to do good and he got fired. Uh, look, and, and they bring their own players with them. Boston had that situation. Minnesota had that situation. They have a new coach and a coach starts to get successful with, his, with the team and he brings in old players. Imagine, imagine that Mark Jackson got their job and he bought some of those Golden State boys here to New York. Well, the one, the one, the one possibility would be Clay Thompson, who's going to be a free agent in 2019 next summer. But I think that that Clay would choose L.A. or Miami before he chose New York because he loves warm weather. Well, you know, he loves his coach too. He is the man who, who who showed him the light. He he is more loyal to him than he is to the warm weather. New York, this is basketball. We are indoor sport. We, it's not like football where you got to be outside freezing your butt off. You in New York City, okay? You know, there's nothing wrong coming to New York. Un- that's unless, wishful, th- you that's know, wishful thinking, JP. That's what you might be right, but that's wishful thinking. You don't know that, neither do I. Okay, Stephen. Steven, um, uh, this Saquon Barkley pick, we had to get him. We had to get him. Not because, you know, he's a transient, you know, this big time player, because, you know, as long as Eli Manning is in a Giants uniform, we're not drafting a quarterback that we think or that we know who could take his spot. You know, it's not happening because of what happened, what took place last season. You know, we can't have that again this season. We have to go into the season, we have to go into the um, season together. The fans have to be together. The ownership has to be together. And the team has to be together. You bring another quarterback here, you're you asking for trouble. You well, we agree. We, 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 there's no disagreement there. And, JP, I appreciate your call as always, man. Thank you so much. There's no disagreement there. None whatsoever. Don't even worry about that one. Let's go to Andrew in Dallas. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hey, Stephen A. Talk Huge to me. What's fan. up? Thank you, bro. Go ahead. All right. Um, I know that the I know that Philly struggled with Boston in Game One, but I still believe that they'll win the series. If Philly wins, do they get out of, out of the East? Andrew, yeah, can you hear me? yeah, yeah, Jess, I can hear you. Go ahead, you live on the air, man. Millions <laughs> are listening to you. Go ahead. <laughs> if Philly wins, do they get out of the Eastern Conference? Yes, I, I picked them to go to the finals. I believe they will, but we got to wait and see because right now I'm worried about them against Boston. This damn Brad Stevens, man, this, this man could coach. This man could coach and the players, I mean, this kid Terry Rozier is special, special. I mean, could you imagine if him and Kyrie are in a lineup together on the court? Then again, all him coming off the bench because guess what? Jalen Brown is your off guard when you got uh, Gordon Haywood in the lineup. I'm just saying, man, Boston. We've been talking about Philly, Boston. We're going to learn a lot this series because I got news for you. If Philly does not beat the Boston Celtics, this playoffs, these playoffs, I got some news for you. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. That damn Charlie Morton for the Astros. Pitched a no-hitter through five innings before giving up a single in the sixth. To Austin Romine, I mean, oh, these Astros. They're so damn good. They really, really are. They really, really are. Hey, Brett Gardner, I hope you're listening. Thanks for the single last night, but three for 35 slump. I mean, come on, can we get it together, please? Please? Pretty please with sugar on top, please? Please? Just saying. Just saying. Damn Astros. They're so good. They're so good. NBA playoffs are on ESPN Radio. Tune in tonight as the Pelicans take on the Warriors, presented by Barbasol Razors. Coverage begins at 10 p.m. Eastern time on most ESPN radio stations. Just want to let y'all know that. 888-SAY-ESPN. That's the number to call. It's 888-729-3776. Back to the phones we go. Let's go to Cedric. Texas, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. What's up, brother Steve? How you doing, brother? Talk to me, my man. Thank you for calling. Yes, sir. I want to tell you, man, I support you 100% what you said on the Knicks. 
Uh, I, I, I do like another a, a couple of other coaches I'd like to look at also. Mark Jackson, no doubt, number one. But I even like looking at a Kenny Smith and also maybe even a Jay Stackhouse, you know, to kind of relate they, to the They've team. all been interviewed. But, they've all been interviewed. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. But as I look at the roster, I'm just going to be straight up with you now. You got some straight garbage on that team. The only well, we know that. that team, yeah, the only dogs I see on that team is I keep Hardaway, I may keep Burke and Cancer. The rest of it, you can kind of push it on out. You said Cantor. Who else? Hardaway and Burke. No Porzingis? Uh, por- yeah, Porzingis, yeah. And All Porzingis. right, I was getting ready to say, I was Porzingis. getting ready to hang up on you. I was getting ready to hang up on you and strip you of your basketball card for a week from this show. Yeah, for I was this getting- last comment I'm going to make, I'm going to hang up, Steve. I'm going to let you just comment on it. Go ahead. Hey, dog, that in- the NFL draft, I- I'm very disappointed. How in the hell do you not draft J.T. Barrett? How do you draft a rugby player that's never even played football over a national champion and a pure outlandish winner? I'm going to hang up. Peace to you. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have any answer to that. I'm not going to tell you that J.T. Barrett is, you know, he's a tweener. You know, you know, you don't consider him a pass on the NFL level. Um, and his athleticism is gifted as he is. You don't see him playing wide receiver like Terrell Pryor or somebody else either. So I don't know, but I'm just saying it's hard for me to imagine that you can draft a rugby player before you draft him. That much I will concede, no doubt. Um, let's go to Ori and man, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hey, Stephen A., I was just uh, curious. Now that Terry Rozier is playing so well, next year I know the Celtics are going to have to make some decisions. I don't know if you think Terry Rozier is more valuable than Marcus Smart or if it's fairly even or what do you think? You know what? It depends on what you need because Marcus Smart, numbers-wise, he can't do what Terry Rozier could do offensively. But Marcus Smart is exceptional defensively, and he's a pest. He's an energizer bunny. He draws offensive fouls. So when I look at a Marcus Smart, there's always a role for somebody like that on your team. That's where it becomes problematic. But if I had to pick between the two, I would tell you Terry Rozier. Fair enough. He's a better shooter. Not what you take, right? That's right. This day and age? That's what I would go with. In this day and age, that's what I would would go with. Appreciate the call, Laurie. Thank you so much. Jeff in Ohio, talk to me. You're live with Stephen A. Stephen A. Yes, sir. Like the Gap Band said in the 1980s, you dropped the bomb today. Lying about Phil Jackson stealing Dolan's money was the greatest thing I've ever heard. Flat out, straight up truth. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, Jeff. And, I, and, you know, I believe it. I totally believe it. With my heart. You steal the money. You steal the money. But I appreciate it, Dave. Uh, Jeff, rather. Thank you so much for the call. Tyron, Tennessee, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hello, Stephen A., man. It's been about three years since I've talked to you. Obviously, a lot has happened since then. And I just want to say God bless you, my brother. God, God bless, bless you. God bless you. Go ahead. And uh, on the Knicks, um, and I agree Mark Jackson should be the front runner. Culture change is needed in New York. But I'm going to throw this hypothetical out there. I don't know if I ever get to this, but to me, desperate times call for desperate measures. If you're the Knicks and James Dolan, at the end of the season, if you're not going to hire Mark Jackson, why wouldn't you, when free agency begins and when the season's over, why wouldn't you go to LeBron and say, LeBron, before you before you uh, reject my proposal to you, why wouldn't you sit down with him and say, LeBron, look, we're going to give you the franchise. You want the coach? Pick your coach. You want the GM? Pick your GM. We're going to give him this franchise for you. Because that's all, I, I think the king would entertain that because it would be power, and he loves power. We know that. And I think if you're James Dolan, you've done a bunch of other dumb things. Why wouldn't at the season end you sit down with LeBron? Because I believe he's going back to the finals and say, LeBron, I think, this I, is your franchise. This- I think the only power that LeBron is interested in is ownership. Other than that, I don't think so. I don't think that's what LeBron is interested in. I think as long as he's playing, he wants to compete for and be in position to cap possibly capture championships, and he wants to do it for as long as he can until his son is ready to come to the league. That's my personal belief. I'm not sure, but I think that's what it is. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Steph Curry, it is official, will make his postseason debut tonight for Game 2 against the New Orleans Pelicans. The Warriors have officially announced Steph Curry will play tonight, game two against the Pelicans. Want to make sure of that.
Learn what affects your credit scores and what you can do to improve them with Credit Karma. Maybe you need to dispute an error on your credit report or you're paying too much interest. Credit Karma can help with that. Visit CreditKarma.com or download the app now. That's CreditKarma.com. Plus, ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive's Home Insurance. Get your quote at Progressive.com today. Back to the phones we go at 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Chris in L.A., you're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> Hey, Stephen A., my apologies for yesterday, man. I, I wasn't prepared. Um, real quick, quick answers from you, if you don't mind. Um, right. do, you be- do you believe that Carmelo Anthony waived his no-trade cost to leave New York to go to Oklahoma City? No. I think he should take the $28 because he'll never get that money back. No, no, no. Okay, okay. Well, th- that wasn't was a question I asked. But, okay, so do you believe he's still chasing the championship? I think he will be chasing the championship. I don't think he'll capture one. If he wants a championship, he's going to have to sacrifice money. Nobody's going to pay Carmelo Anthony $28 million the way he's looked this year. Nobody's giving him that money. I agree 1,000%. So it, it just bounces my mind that he's not willing to come off the bench if he's willing to, if he's chasing a championship. But real quick, I want to touch on what I saw from Boston to Philly, if you don't mind. Um, I think Philly's in trouble, Stephen A. Um, real, for, for just my point of view, I believe this is a, this is a bad match for Philly because – all the shooters and all that good stuff that you guys see, the only mismatch that Philly has is Joel and B. Ben Simmons, as good as he is, he's not he's not a shooter, and they're forcing him to beat them. And he's attached, they're staying attached to the Bellinelli, the Iliasovas, the Reddicks, and those guys aren't able to put the ball on the ground and create for themselves. So when Ben Simmons has the ball, he's looking elsewhere, but Boston is staying attached and saying, Ben, beat us. Joel's going to do what he does, but there's a matchup on him. And on the other end, they can't defend Tatum. They're getting Brown back, and they can't defend Rozier. So I think Philly might be in trouble, Stephen A., and they that's might my be. opinion. I, I definitely think they're going to be in trouble because here's the reality. What alarmed me most about what I saw last night was Boston's ability to run Philadelphia's three-point shooters off the line and make them put the ball on the floor and try to penetrate in the interior in order to make something happen. They essentially forced the Sixers into becoming a two-point shooting team instead of a three-point shooting team, and that concerns me a great, great deal. Philadelphia is going to have to answer, have an answer for that. And it's going to have to start with Ben Simmons. He's going to need to attack the basket. He's going to need to go at the basket and to make things happen. That's what he's going to need to do. If not just for himself, but for those, but to create open shots for others. If he can, if he can't do that, Philadelphia is not going to win the series. I agree. Real quickly, let me go. But I don't believe he's a threat to do that, though, Stephen. And Boston knows that. Brad Stevens, as good as he is with his ex and nose, he knows Ben Simmons is not looking to score. He knows he's not, he's not no, looking no, no, to score. No, 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 Chris, you're wrong. He's not looking to score from the perimeter. But if you give Ben Simmons a path to the basket or he takes it, he will finish at the basket. The point is, if he does that with skill, then ultimately you're going to have to pay more attention to him which means you'll have to suffocate the lane. If you suffocate the lane, that's going to leave shooters open on the wing. And at 6'10", with his passing and ball handling ability, he's clearly capable of feeding other guys on the perimeter. That's why I'm saying it starts with him. He gets into the lane, you finish at the basket, you force them to pay attention to you, and that will open up shots for three-point shooters. And you got about five or six of them. You should be able to do that. But he doesn't want to go to the free throw line, Stephen. And that's something to keep in mind as well. I don't believe he wants to go to the free throw line. Well, that's you got to remember, opinion. he was shooting 57% in the regular season. He's shooting 71% in the postseason. But this so is the money time now. Well, well, you you answering questions that you ask him, bro. I'm giving you answers. His free throw shooting has improved better than 10% in the postseason. So if he was scared, he clearly has overcome that fear because he's hitting more free throw shots. So okay. we shall see. I got to okay. run. I appreciate the call. Thank you. Herman in New Orleans, you're live with Stephen A. What's going on? Hey, Stephen A., big fan of yours. Thank I you, got, man. It's a, I got a two-part question for you. Um, not, at Steve, not at Stephen Curry's plan tonight. I don't know how the Pelicans are going to win this series. But after this series, do you think they'll be able to sign uh, Boogie Cousins and keep Miracic to be able to compete with Houston and Golden State? Now hang up and listen to your I don't know if they should keep Boogie Cousins. I think they might be better off without him. I think you might be better off uh, uh, getting uh, Boogie Cousins to engage in a sign and trade and letting him go someplace like Washington for Otto Porter or letting him go somewhere else. Because in this particular system, when you see the way New Orleans is shining, 
I don't think you do that with Boogie Cousins on the floor. Rondo, with Drew Holiday in the backcourt, has been incredible for the Pelicans thus far in the postseason. Obviously not game one against the Warriors, but clearly against the Portland Trailblazers. With Boogie Cousins, he's you, you run your offense through him because he's such an exceptional passer, but you're still slower. And I think the West Coast, the Western Conference, particularly in the postseason, it's more of an up-tempo kind of thing. I definitely think that's the case. So I appreciate the call. Thank you. Let's go to Mike in Missouri. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Mike? Hallelujah, sir. Thank you. I love your show. Uh, Stephen A., I just want to make a quick, quick little – I've been watching the NBA for years and years and years, and I've I've loved it all. But uh, what it comes down to me between LeBron and Michael uh, being the GOAT, uh, Michael – Michael broke my heart many nights because I, as, when I was watching him play, I was a Celtic fan. Okay, Michael was going out scoring forty, fifty, sixty game, you know, and losing, losing, mm-hmm. losing playoff series. Okay, but okay. as Michael matured, okay, as Michael matured, Michael was more of a coach on on the court. He made the other guys better. He get up in their grill. He get up in Bill Cartwright's grill. You know what I'm saying? He get up in in Scotty's grill. That is what is lacking with LeBron. Michael at LeBron's age, he he would that that game with Indiana wouldn't have went seven games. So that would have been a sweet, sweet, sweet. And I just want to let you know I enjoy your show, and uh, I'm gonna continue listening, and uh, I'm gonna get off here. And, and let you let you say what you need to say, sir. I, I deeply appreciate it. Thank you so much, and I thank you for listening. I will tell you that I love LeBron. Um, I think he's the greatest player in the world. I think he's an incredible role model. Um, I think he's all of these things that he, you know he wants everybody to know about him while he tries to control one narrative after another, which is the only thing I get on him about. It's like, look, just because somebody's getting on you about basketball doesn't mean we fail to recognize the greatness of you at not only as a player, but as a human being. And it's nothing wrong with us just focusing on your basketball exploits because we ain't trying to get all into your personal life, at least not this way. Having said that, LeBron will never be Jordan to me. Jordan is a six time NBA champion, six finals MVPs who has never allowed the NBA final series to get to a seventh game ever. That's what resonates with me. And to me, that level of perfection, that level of greatness, I happen to be one of those individuals who believe that if Jordan hadn't retired, Houston would have never won a championship. Jordan and his teams would have beat Olajuwon with Kenny Smith, with Robert Ori, Robert Ori and Clyde Drexler and all of these boys. I happen to firmly believe that Michael Jordan and his teams would have beaten them. That's what I believe. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. This Mother's Day, show mom just how much you've appreciated all of the support she's given you with 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, when you get ahead of the Mother's Day rush, 1-800-Flowers will give you an exclusive 30 for 30 offer, 30 assorted tulips for just $30. Don't put this off, guys. To order 30 stunning assorted tulips for only $30, go to 1-800-Flowers.com, click the radio icon, and enter code Stephen A. That's 1-800-Flowers.com, code Stephen A. Order today and save at 1-800-Flowers.com, code Stephen A. A. That's with a PH, not a V. The offer expires today. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.